Welcome back to Betty's channel, she's doing the do as always. Please give us a like, give us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe, drop a comment down below, tell us what you think we're doing. We're back on with Better 2 today. Weather's still a bit iffy, so I'm not going to be cutting a hole in the roof today. I'm going to be doing some more electrical stuff, and I'm going to put around here somewhere a couple of USB charging points uh, so I can charge your metal detectors and stuff, because um, that's where they're going to be stored. Oh, what's that there? That is, just turn around, that's a little mushroom vent that I'm going to put where the bathroom's going. So we'll go in the middle of the uh, uh, shower cubicle up there. Um, but again, I'm not doing that until nearer the time the bathroom's ready for finishing. But it's only a tenner off eBay, which isn't bad. And that'll obviously take away the condensation from somebody having a shower. So that'll be good. So the USBs are going to go here. So I'm going to take this panel off again, drill a hole, wire up some USBs. Just put the wires through there. I have to drill another hole there for the negative um, wire, which will go to the, and I'll be behind there somewhere to the van body. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's crack on with that. I've got to dismantle the bed again because I always put it back up just to finish off the uh, video so it looks alright. So let's crack on with that. I'm also looking at the solar panel setup. There's two solar panels because I got really confused about wiring two solar panels up, and and the fact do I need do I need two solar controllers, which are these. So the wires from the solar panel go into this these two connections. The wires out to the battery go in that one, and you can power lights if you want to, and you could got two two USBs. In Betty one, uh, I've got this plugged into the Wi-Fi router so it's constantly on charge even when the isolator is switched off and I've got all this all this wiring anyway I went on YouTube last night and had a look at different videos and also messaged somebody who who's on Instagram who was putting solar panels in there's two ways of doing it one is parallel one is series or the other is series even um, and with parallel you have to have uh, an NC4 adapter where two two negatives and two positives go into one connection, and then that one connection connects to the battery. But there's something about you if you've got 210 watt solar panels, your voltage stays at 110 watt. Or sorry, your wattage stays at 110. Uh, that's in parallel. In series, which basically you connect the um, positive from one panel to the negative of the other panel because as you can see the different connectors and they're going to each other um, and then the other positive and the other negative from the panel goes to the solar controller that way you don't lose your, your double power from two solar panels but something to do with the ampage it doesn't increase it for some reason I don't I don't totally understand it but I'm going to go in I'm going to go in series because I obviously don't want to lose the power of two solar panels so that's what I'm going to do when I finally get around to doing it is connect the positive from one panel to the negative of the other panel and then the other two wires which are also positive and negative will go into the solar controller and then to the battery so that's the way I'm going to do it that seems to be the best way I mean it may change by the time I come to put them on the roof but I don't know so we'll wait and see but before then I have to do some more work on the electrical setup. I don't have to do it, I just can't do the solar panels yet because I need to remove that spin event and put the other skylight in. I can't do that until I get one dry day and it rained last night, so I can't do it today. That's where we're up to at this moment in time. I'm currently storing stuff in the bathroom, vents and stuff, insulation. But yeah, right, let's crack on and uh, see if we get on to in this episode. These little 12 volt LED lights are uh, from, for, basically for a caravan. But I'm going to put one of these underneath that cupboard as like a, a nighttime light when we're both reading or watching our phones, or whatever. Um, so I'm going to put a stick one there. The other, another one I was going to put under here for a kitchen light, 
but I've got some LEDs as well I wanted to use. Again, we'll see what's what, and then we'll take it from there. The other thing I want to do is I have decided to carpet the cupboards, so I'm going to carpet underneath the sides and the fronts. So it should them little caravan doors should look good. And I'm also going to carpet the electrical panel as well to make it look a bit better. And then maybe while I'm doing that, I'm going to finally carpet around the edges of these as well. And I will also be carpeting the back doors and cladding the bottom bit. We can see that blue blue piece. So they're going to have cladding in and I might clad the top. The middle bit, I want to put them small round windows in. Uh, but I've not found any yet that are cheap enough. So again, it's a work in progress and we'll crack on and take it from there. Turns out I've only got one USB fitting um, and I've got three of these power sockets. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to install these two and then um, I'll just put a, a USB adapter in there should we need to because I'm, I can't use the bod, the, the van one. I'm going to take that out or I'm going to um, blank it off because of the bed post goes so I can't use that. So it's just easier to put them two in there. So let's do that. Got them a connector bit here that I've used in uh, Betty One. Crimpers, splicers. So I'm just going to wire up the two sockets and then drill the holes. To be honest, I don't like really using them. I tend to just use a pair of pliers and just crimp. Focus. Just crimp them over. Clamp them. So I'm just going to wrap a bit of insulation tape around just to protect it. Red goes to the positive, black to the negative, and that's a theme throughout. That's two sockets ready to be fitted. Just cut off enough wire to get to the fuse box. This is the uh, drill I'm going to use, and I think it's 32mm, but I'm not sure. But I've used it before. And if you can just see, it's slightly bigger than the USB socket, so it'll fit in quite nicely. With a bit of wiggle room, because we like a bit of wiggle room. Two holes drilled. Let's fit the sockets. That's what it looks like from the back. When I come to put the insulation in here, I'm always going to have to be careful that these are sticking through. So I'll make a bit of adjustments on the insulation for that. But other than that, happy with that. So I'll put the panel back for a bit and see what it looks like. And there we've got two extra power sockets. The wires go around the back and come out here. So there's plenty of room, plenty of room to reach the fuse box. So we've got two USB sockets and a 12 volt power socket. Obviously they're not going to be like massively, they're not going to be powering power tools or anything like that, but for charging purposes they'll be fine. In Betty One you can see all the wires come down from the top, down the side, and they go to the electrical box, which is inside there. And I wanted to get away from that for Betty Two and that's what I've done. So really, it does pay to do your wiring first, but you need to plan for that. It's not always easy. I've not planned for it, but I managed to tuck it down the um, door frame in Betty too. So there you go. That's the basic setup from for this end of the van. Isolator switch, two charging points, fuse box, solar controller. It's going to make hopefully one hole here that the wires from the roof will come up into, into this junction box. And then hopefully through the same hole, the two wires that go to the battery along the back. So I'm really pleased with how it looks, to be honest. Compared to Betty One setup, I'll just show you. Right, this is Betty One setup. As you can see, it's a bit of a mess. Um... Got the isolator switch. Move this audio upright. Isolator switch there. 
one way to the fuse box, one way to the battery, solar controller, oh that's the um, power lead for the internet, split charger, again one way to the battery, one way to the fuse box, Sorry, one way to the battery, one way to the van battery, because that charges the batteries as the engine's running. Fuse box, inverter, and two 110 amp uh, batteries. I did put that additional socket there to charge the metal detector and stuff, or to charge something else. But obviously I've included that in the um, panel in bay two. And as you can see, it's a bit of a mess. Everything works. There's nothing. There's no danger. Or anything um, going astray or burning out or anything like that. That's the diesel heater power way, which I was put in a different place in bay two. The inverter in bay two will go over near the batteries, as will the split charger. So what you've just seen on um, the panel is that's it. There's going to be nothing else added. So I'll just go back and show you what's what. Before I show you what's what, this white plug here that goes into the inverter, that is a 240 volt uh, wire that goes to the plug socket near the fridge, which is there. I've not decided where to put the fridge in bay two yet. And then there's another socket under the sink for things like her dryers and her straighteners. Not that I need them. Change to move my hand, obviously, because I've no hair. So right, back to Betty 2. Before we get to get back to Betty 2, if we were on a campsite, all I would do was unplug that and plug in the extension lead that will go to the onshore power. Back to Betty 2. So, as you can see, it's a lot better, a lot cleaner looking than Betty 1. This is how you learn when you carry on building camper vans. You can see the two batteries there. They will be moved either way, depending on what else I need to put in there. So there's going to be bench seating here, so all this is going to be hidden under seating. So the only thing to add there is the inverter and the split charger. In a transit, the batteries are under the driver's seat, so it's quite easy to run the wire from the battery to the split charger, split charger to the ledger batteries. So, you shouldn't be able to see any wiring whatsoever, which is good. I'm pleased about that. Again, this is what I've learned in building Betty 1. Wanting to make it a bit better. Everything's going to be carpeted. The side of the roof is going to be carpeted. Um, and insulated so the, the wires are going to be hidden and it's going to be the same in these cupboards sides of the roof are going to be insulated carpeted and you're not going to see the wiring so I'm quite pleased well run about carpeting I'm going to carpet these fronts and the sides are underneath so it's a grey it's that grey carpet there so it'll be nice and light not easy to clean, but it will, the effect is really good. And I think the brown doors from the caravan site I bought and the breakers will set off the grey nicely. And I'm also going to carpet the side of the shower on this side just to make it look a bit more nice. And then I've got the rest of the carpeting to do up the Across the top of the door, down that pillar, round here, across the top, down, and the back doors. But I'm, I'm just, I keep, I keep saying it, I know I keep saying it, but I'm in, just impressed with the basic setup and how clean it looks. Happy days. I've just drilled that hole there, which will take the solar, con solar panel wires up to there. And then back out of there and along the back and I've just drilled that big hole behind the isolator where hopefully I can get the wires through uh, which will go to uh, 
and two nuts. Might have to make it a bit bigger, but we'll see. Anyway, I've decided what I'm going to do now. Put that back on there. I want to take everything off and carpet it. Carpet the panel. And that should make it look a lot better. I've also realised that I need to drill a hole there and a hole there above and below the fuse box because the negative wire will go through there to the van body and the positive wire from the isolator will go around the back, up through there and attach to that. And then obviously there'll, obviously there'll be a long red wire coming from the battery to the isolator. So once that's switched on, power will go to that. That'll earth it and then all these can branch off to where they're going. Like that lot. Let's carry on.